How do you think that message was received in Arizona today? Well, Lawrence, thanks for having me. The, the sincerity of the president's message, uh, particularly as it refers to his old friend, uh, can't escape anyone. And I think uh, folks in Arizona, particularly veterans like myself, uh, are, are thinking deeply about that message, what it means, and, and why the fight to protect and save democracy from the threats that it faces internally is so incredibly important nowadays. It sounded like he was trying to reach beyond just Arizona voters for their attention, but also to those McCain Republican voters in Arizona, uh, some of whom, uh, I'm sure, many of whom remember the first thing Donald Trump as a candidate said about John McCain uh, in 2015. Let's listen to that. He's not a war He's hero. He's a war hero. He's a war Five hero. And a half years He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? So there he is saying that John McCain was not a war hero, and then we heard what he said about uh, being captured. Uh, the president clearly was trying to reach over to that Rusty Bowers uh, Republican, John McCain Republican in Arizona. Well, I think he was reaching out to more folks than just the Republicans. I think he was reaching out to independents and Democrats and anyone who wore the uniform like I did when I was in the Marine Corps. The bottom line is this. We sent young men and women overseas to fight against uh, authoritarianism. We sent folks to do uh, a lot of things that uh, a lot of other people didn't even bother to volunteer to do or tried to avoid doing. Uh, their honor, their valor, their courage and commitment needs to be honored. And what they were fighting for needs to be protected. And that is our democracy. I mean, you can't get away from the sincerity of the president's message, the personal nature of it. And... Uh, it's it's hard sometimes to uh, uh, it's hard sometimes to maintain a cool head when you listen to some folks saying some of the things that uh, some other folks have said about men and women in uniform. Uh, the the speech was billed as a defense of democracy, which it primarily was. That's what the the, the body of the speech was about. What is the state of health uh, or the riskiness of democracy in Arizona now? Well, as a recent report by Issue One indicates, we've lost uh, senior election officials in 12 of our 15 counties since 2020. That represents about 98 percent of our voters are going to have some folks with a little bit less experience moving forward. And, and human error can move in uh, in those kinds of situations. And uh, but but here's the good news uh, at the secretary of state's office. We are training good folks and the folks who are coming in know the kind of atmosphere that they're coming into. They are nonetheless uh, willing to push forward. They're willing to take on the risks and the threats and the harassment uh, and do the job. They're doing the job for their fellow citizens and for the health of our democracy. So while it looks a little bit dire sometimes, I think uh, there's hope. Uh, and I'm very, very proud to be part of a team that's going to continue to build on that hope and push forward through a successful 2024 cycle. What is your biggest concern uh, as you approach the, uh, at being the chief administrator of the presidential election there? Well, I think it's first important to note that elections in Arizona are bottom up. They are run at the county levels. The secretary of state doesn't do ballot design or tabulation or any of that stuff. We provide training certification. We make sure everybody is following the rules. That being said, uh, those folks need help and they need as much help as possible. But my biggest concern uh, isn't so much the possible issues that could pop up there. It's the misinformation and disinformation. It's the continuous lies that are perpetuated by even some office holders in Arizona now that are dividing us one American from another based on no evidence, based on conjecture and conspiracy theories. That's the most dangerous thing, where they are eroding our civic faith in one another as Americans, and the erosion of that faith uh, could lead to worse things. Uh, unfortunately, our, our democracy is on the line because uh, of that nonsense. What, do you have allies on the Republican side in Arizona? Absolutely. I mean, all you've got to do is look at the results of the 2022 election to see that we have a lot of allies on the Republican side of things. You know, my uh, win against one of America's worst election deniers, a, uh, an oath keeper, an anti-Semite, uh, you know, a fascist kind of a guy. Uh, we got a lot of Republican votes. All you got to do is look at the numbers to see that we trounced him on purpose because we called him out. 
Uh, we've got uh, Mark Kelly in the Senate, Katie Hobbs in the governor's office, Chris Mays in the attorney general's office. We all ran against election deniers, and that means we had to have Republican help. And here's why. Right now, or actually in 2022, the Republicans uh, were barely ahead of independent voters and Democrats were in third place. It was about a third, a third and a third. Now, independents outnumber both Republicans and Democrats. But you look at the way the numbers broke out. We could not have won the way we did across the state without the help of reasonable Republicans who still believe in the ideals of John McCain uh, and folks like him who understand the true meaning of America, that it is country first and politics much, much later.